Hey guys, so we are approaching season two of CCL and I wanted to talk a little bit about the rosters and what we might expect out of these. And this might give you guys something to look forward to as far as a team to root for because my favorite part of sports and esports is not really the gameplay itself. I love the gameplay, but my favorite part is having teams to root for, having specific players that you expect to do something and when they do it, you're like, I knew they I knew they were gonna do that. Or if they don't do it and they do something different that surprises you, you're like, oh well, I'm gonna look forward to that in the future. And so it's just kind of fun to have that, and this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go through the rosters now that they've all been revealed and just kind of hype up some of these teams because personally I think this is I I personally think these rosters are better than last season. Um, both of the rosters were great. But uh, this season, guys, I'm pretty hyped for. So let's get into it. So on the first team, we have the Pentanoms. And the Pentanoms, we've got Tim from Hero Fitness, uh, an amazing tank player. We've seen him stream quite a bit. Plays a good Arthas. Plays decent Joanna. I mean, it's really whatever they need. But he has filled in as a healer in the past and may end up doing that again. We've got Kyle Ferguson, the, the man, the myth, the legend. The one that is always coming up with these... Uh, stats analysis and everything uh, he's probably going to bring a lot of the strategy to this game we've got Munfair who brought the wildest strategies changed to healer last minute and led his team to victory uh, through a very unique shot calling style that I would like to call it like a friendly B rating of your team. Um, I don't know, his shot calling style is, is very interesting, but he did end up leading his team. They all enjoyed playing with him. Uh, then we have Tatsuki Chu, played a really strong Rainer, and now we have Miss Pause that was added as well. Not too familiar, but I'm excited to see what they bring to the table. Now, what we're going to expect out of this team is you can't really ban out this team. They have a wide roster pool and it's gonna be difficult to deal with. The real issue is who's gonna go in what role. We saw Mune play a really strong assassin in the first series, but then they lost because they didn't have a strong healer. And we're at kind of that same point again where none of these are really healer mains. Um, so is Mune gonna head back over to healer again to keep that going? It worked last time. Uh, or are they going to end up putting someone else in that role? I would imagine they're gonna put Tim from Heroes of Fitness on to tank, Kyle on to solo lane, Mune is an assassin, Tatsuki is an assassin, and Miss Paws is support. But we'll see how they decide to play this out because it could go anyway. But it's going to be a difficult team to play against because their strategies are up in the air. We don't know what they're going to bring. There's nothing in particular that you really want to ban against either of these teams. So overall, pretty solid. Then we have Little Rubies. A lot of familiar names. We've got Lashes. Uh, if you're not familiar with Lashes, she's a streamer that's been playing a lot of Heroes of the Storm lately. A lot of, again, another wide roster pool. We have Liam, dominated as Yurel, won every single game that he played Yurel, only lost when Yurel was banned. Uh, and at that time, he was still doing a lot of work in those games when Yurel was banned, but it just wasn't enough. So, banning Yurel is going to put you in one particular spot against this team. Then we have Trixler. He's played overwhelmingly well uh, in these games and has done really well in all of the different celebrity versions of this game. Has a relatively wide roster pool, going to be hard to, to ban out. We've got Kagiri, plays a very strong Li Ming. We've seen her play a, a few other things, but Li Ming is the one that's really stood out to me. And Lake Fu, the MVP from the previous season, playing a Deckard that was undefeated uh, and used Ruby after Ruby was buffed. That's where I'm guessing their name came from. Little Rubies were expecting more Deckard. The problem is if you ban Deckard, Lake Vu can play really anything. You ban uh, Urel and Liam can play almost anything. This is going to be a very dominant team in how strong they are, but it will require some bans because you just can't let those two things go through. So it's going to, their strategy is going to be revolving around having great backups for both Liam and Lake Fu, uh, because most likely their mains are going to be banned. Then we have uh, Big Ding Energy. I'm guessing they like questing talents for those those big dings. Uh, with that being said, we've got Jazzy, we've got Alora, we've got Mockery, we've got Vipey, we've got Alicia Wins, and this is a very solid team with a similar issue as the previous one. They have members that are very good on a small subset of heroes, uh, and then they have members with a decent roster pool. So their strategy, again, is going to be very similar. Uh, they're going to get their mains banned, 
and then they are going to have to have strong backups. For example, Alora dominated on Ragnaros, dominated on Lunara, Mockery dominates on Tracer. So with those being banned, then they're going to have to have strong backups. I know for sure Mockery's got really good backups, uh, but Alora is going to be tricky. You don't really want to ban both of her picks because then Mockery gets whatever he wants. So she'll likely have to shift back and forth. Uh, but this is where their team is going to be strong. We also have Vipy, who also likes very mobile. In fact, most of their team plays very mobile heroes. So this could be a very unique strategy for them is to abuse this mobility that they all like to play. Uh, Alicia Wins plays Malfurion, who I've said this before, is one of the best healers for mobile teams because they can all spread out and still be getting heals. So that's kind of a strategy that I would expect from a team like this, but... Who knows what they're actually going to bring to the table. And finally, we have NSFWFH, which I, if I remember correctly, means not safe for work from home. Yes, that is what it stands for. Um, this has Kyberries, Russ, actually Turk, uh, which is just Turk, uh, <laughs> Salinity, and Coffee. We've seen a lot of these in the past. Turk was on the previous winning team. Uh, Salinity played one of the most terrifying Li Mings we've ever seen. Uh, from CCL. Coffee played, a, again, a scary Alarak as well. Uh, Kyberries, I've been getting messaged over and over and over to check out her Anduin play. So I'm guessing it's good. I haven't seen it yet. I'm excited to see it. And then finally, Russ is a new name in here. Uh, Russ has been a top five GM consistently almost every single season, and he likes to play high impact versions of these tanks. So he plays builds that might <laughs> might not be meta but they are builds that allow him to have high impact on his own so we're gonna have one of the best tank players in this game on their team playing his high impact versions of these builds that means that we're gonna see these bruiserish uh brawler types of uh garrosh and malganis and muridan and stuff like that that's gonna allow him to just bully people throughout these games so russ is a very very good player and one that we are going to see a lot out of this is another one of those teams like the first where you can't really just ban out their mains because they all have such wide roster pools uh you don't give coffee alarak he's got keltazad you don't give selenity uh Li Ming, she's got jaina uh you don't give turk i mean turk just plays a whole bunch of really weird stuff you're not gonna ban um and then same thing with uh kyberries i mean you get rid of randwin she plays malfurion she plays Rhaegar, and Rhaegar right now is scary. So uh, this is going to be really a rough team. Overall, though, let me know what you guys think. Are you excited for CCL, and what teams are you rooting for? Are you expecting anything particular from any of these players? Because I am very excited, and I'm ready to hear what you guys think.